Dacryosis tiris is the medical term for an infection or inflammation of the lacrimal sac, which is part of the tear drainage system located between the inner corner of the eye and the nasal cavity. The condition typically results from a blockage in the nasal lacrimal duct, which prevents tears from draining normally into the nasal cavity. This obstruction allows bacteria to accumulate, leading to infection. This process can be both acute and chronic. About 6% of babies born have congenital nasal lacrimal duct obstruction, or NLDO. Dacryocystitis happens in about 1 in 3,884 live births. It's more common in females than in males because their passageways are smaller. The tear drainage system consists of lacrimal glands that produce tears which keep the eye surface moist. Punctum or small openings in the inner corner of the upper and lower eyelids that drain tears into the tear ducts. Canaliculi, which are small ducts that carry tears from the punctum to the lacrimal sac. And lacrimal sac itself is a sac like structure that collects the tears before they drain through the nasal lacrimal duct into the nose. And finally, nasal lacrimal duct that connects the lacrimal sac to the nasal cavity allowing tears to pass into the nose. There are several causes of dacryocystitis. The first and the most common cause is nasal lacrimal dot obstruction that leads to stagnant tears and bacterial growth. The second common cause is congenital abnormalities. Babies may have underdeveloped tear ducts which can cause congenital dacryocystitis. Another cause is nasal or sinus infections. Infections from nearby structures can spread to the lacrimal sac. Injury to the nasal lacrimal duct can lead to scarring and obstruction. And finally, and the real reason is tumors. Growth in the tear drainage system can block the duct. Now, let's see what is the symptoms of dacryocystitis. The first and the common symptom is swelling and redness around the inner corner of the eye. Pain in the affected area and in some cases excessive tearing due to the inability to drain tears properly. Pus may be discharged from the eye or through the puncta. In some cases, the infection can cause systemic symptoms like fever. And finally, the area around the lacrimal sac may be tender to the touch. If the dacryocystitis remains untreated, it may progress and form an abscess. And sometimes the infection around the eye can spread further to the surrounding tissue and cause a more severe condition called orbital cellulitis. The first step to diagnose the disease is clinical examination to evaluate the signs and symptoms by the doctor. In some cases, CT scans or ultrasounds may be used to assess the extent of the infection or rule out other causes of obstruction. If pus is present, it can be cultured to identify the bacteria causing the infection. There are several important treatments for dacryocystitis. Now we are gonna generally discuss it. Oral or intravenous antibiotics are the primary treatment for acute dacryocystitis to control the infection. Applying warm compressors to the affected area can help reduce swelling and promote drainage. In chronic cases or when antibiotics do not resolve the infection, a procedure known as dacryocystirorhinostomy or DCR may be performed to bypass the blocked duct. If an abscess forms, surgical drainage may be necessary. And the final treatment is balloon dacryoplasty. This minimally invasive procedure involves using a balloon catheter to open a blocked nasal lacrimal duct. Regular eye hygiene and prompt treatment of nasal or sinus infections can reduce the risk of developing dacryocystitis. In infants with congenital blockage, gentle massage of the tear ducts can sometimes help open them, and surgical intervention is rarely needed.